how do you know this clean? It's like, well, I've done podcasts with Nikita since they started all those dev casts and podcasts were my idea. I worked with BSG as their like marketing guy for the United States. And I also just have had a lot of conversations with Nikita and some guys at Battlestate about these kinds of things and just kind of like broadening my horizon in terms of what this game is eventually going to turn into. Oh my god, I actually have extracts on one side of the map. Holy shit. Okay, question chat. Question, question, question. Tarkov question, actually. Do you think if every map in the game worked like labs in reserve, in other words, it doesn't matter where you spawn, all extracts are available to you on any given map? If no, why? I feel like there'd be a lot less PvP. Do you want to know what Arena's going to be for, right? The reason why Arena was made? was for people who want PvP. Whenever we have map-to-map -map travel in Tarkov, we're not going to have raid timers anymore, for the most part, and there's going to be a lot less PvP. So, if you're the type of person that wants PvP, don't get me wrong, I understand, it's fun in this game, PvP is great, but that's literally what Arena's supposed to be. There would still be PvP at hotspots and stuff, but it would make it too easy. But don't you think that extracting is already hard enough for a majority of the player base, as is? Is it a wrong, th is it a bad thing that being able to get to an extract would be a little bit easier on some maps, not all? It's not e the easiest thing to extract on labs. It's not the easiest thing to extract on reserve. Because uh, uh, reserve and labs are the only maps in the game, I mean, with the exception of maybe Lighthouse, where all of the extracts are always open to you, no matter where you spawn. And frankly, being able to double tap O and see whether or not somebody took V extract or like open an extract, I think is bullshit. I think the only thing that should alert you of an extract is if you either, like, say, like, you see the lights on in the bunker, or you hear the alarm in reserve. I think it's bullshit that you can double tap O and see the status of an extract. I think that's bad. I don't, I don't think any player should have that information, unless they go acquire it in-game itself. So, with open world, it's, it's not gonna be, like, a part of the main mode. So, like, the raid-to-raid, -raid, map the map thing will always be there. That's never going away. The open world mode is going to be like Arena. It'll be a separate mode to escape from Tarkov entirely. So like the, the core gameplay loop will be a lot different. Not maybe a lot, but it'll be pretty different. What about the current wage system? How would open world work? There, there, there'll be dead drop zones. So there'll be like, so just how you can pay a car to like extract you. You can pay a car or a certain area to dump loot off that gets sent to your stash. And there'll be a, uh, like when, when, when traders have their own like area, there'll be an area, I believe within the zone where you can drop loot off there and then send it to your stash. And like that, that's the way for you to drop things off without having to like go back to your hideout. Okay. So let me, let me explain this. So let me get to the, uh, the raid screen. Cause this is going to make a lot more sense. Basically, I, I can't answer that. I don't know. I can't, can't answer that. Okay, so. Here we have the map of Escape from Tarkov. So, eventually, um, there will be a wipe for Escape from Tarkov that is like the wipe of wipes. It's when the personal story missions come in. It's when the start of the game happens. Currently, we're in the mid-game of Escape from Tarkov. And what does that mean? What that means is that We've already been to all of these locations, with the exception of town, because that's obviously going to be DLC, but we've technically like visited these like, locations, and we've progressed far enough in the personal story missions for your PMC, because all of the missions we have now are side quests. They're side quests. That's why they're annoying and kind of tedious. They're not the main storyline for Escape from Tarkov. They kind of have hints in there that allude to what is going on in Tarkov and what the storyline of the PMC will be like, but they are side quests. They're not the primary missions of the game. Just like in Skyrim, where you have like the main quest line of the Dovahkin, right? And then there's the side quests. And like those are completely different from the main storyline. They're completely separate. And so right now, we don't have that main Dovahkin storyline. We only have the side missions. Even if some of them are kind of elaborate and have like chains, like Chemical Part 1 or whatever. Or the Chemical Quest. So eventually a wipe will happen, okay? where we no longer have all these locations. You won't be able to go to labs. You won't even be able to go to factory. You won't even be able to go to customs. You won't have any of the traders. You won't have the flea market. You won't have your stash. None of this will be there. It'll just literally just not fucking be there at all. 
What happens is you start on streets, you have the prologue mission, which is the very first mission of the game, and it's the only offline mission that actually counts towards progress on your character and your game. It starts in Tarbank Tower, which is that big fucking tower in the middle of Tarkov, and you got sent there on an op, Pharaoh Yusek, and it's essentially a tutorial. It basically teaches you the basics of the game, uh, the basic core fundamentals of how Tarkov plays. There'll be some cutscenes and some dialogue with characters. And then as soon as you finish that, you're on streets and you're only on streets. By the time you get into streets, you'll have, I think, met Therapist. And she's like the first person, she's like the first NPC that you encounter. And so you literally cannot go to streets, interchange, customs, factory, because suburbs and streets are getting absorbed into one map. They're not two maps anymore. They're going to be absorbed. Um, and you'll have to linearly progress throughout the entire game. And eventually get the terminal, which is where we escape. And it's not an aircraft terminal. It's not an airport. It's a boating terminal. Tarkov is a no-fly zone for the most part for military aircrafts. And since you're a PMC, getting on a plane is probably going to be hard. Um, so you're going to have to linearly progress through the world. Starting in streets. And then you'll have to find extracts that will take you to different locations. And there'll be like kind of safe zones in between them that you can choose to go to. So like when you go to a extract, you can say... Do I want to go to therapist encampment or do I want to proceed to interchange or something along those lines? And by the time we get the customs, we'll have met Ragman, we have met Prapper, we have met Skier, um, and I believe potentially Peacekeeper. Peacekeeper might actually be later on. And certain extracts will take you to different maps. So for example, if you want to, you know, eventually get to reserve, you're going to have to get cool with the scabs on customs and find the military checkpoint key, which opens up that little, you know, tower, uh, like on uh, like boiler side of customs, like the scab checkpoint. Uh, well, not necessarily like scab checkpoint. It's like the extraction for scabs, but like that, you know, you guys know what I'm talking about. It's like the truck, the barbed wire, the tower that sniper scab usually spawns in. That key is eventually going to be necessary for you to get into reserve. Once you get into reserve, you can then take the train and that takes you to lighthouse. And then from lighthouse, you go to shoreline and terminal. Again, it's, it's going to be very linear. From interchange, the train will take you to customs. Or you can take other extracts. So there'll be more than one way to like discover each raid. And the train is actually a very large lore item in Escape from Tarkov that is essentially like one of the main ways that you can get to and from a lot of raids. And it's how you discover raids in the first place. So we're in the mid game right now. We have discovered all the traders. We've met them. We have discovered a lot of the raids. We've, we've progressed far enough in the personal storyline to uncover the documentation of labs, which is a secret laboratory that nobody's really supposed to know about, but eventually you figure out where it is and how to get there. Once you, once you get the customs, by the time you get the customs and factory, just around that area, all the ZB bunkers, right? That's when you get your hideout. That's when you get your stash. That's when you get the option to start at the center of the game, customs factory, which is like the middle of Tarkov. And that's when we have our multi-layered raids. So if we want to say, go to woods, or go to interchange, or even labs, you're going to have to go underground, and then you get spit up. So if I want to go, you know, uh, say to reserve, I'm going to have to spawn in customs or factory, and then take the extract to reserve, then go back to customs or factory or woods, and then go back to your stash. You know all those underground ZB bunkers that are literally littered everywhere around the map? There's a bunch on woods that are around the mountain. There's a bunch on customs. There's a couple doors on factory. Those are all essentially like a big web from like the, 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 the epicenter being your hideout. And then you extend out and then you have to come back. It's not just go out of a raid and go back in. And so that's a lot like how a lot of the multi-layered raids are going to go. Or if you want to go to labs, you can, you can go to factory. Then you can go to labs. Or you can go to streets. Then you can go to labs. But after you're done with labs, depending on what extract you take, it will spit you out on a certain raid or a certain area of a raid. And a lot of the progression that we have is going to be so much different in so many different ways. And you guys might be wondering, like, what about dropping off loot? How do I, like, you know, how am I expected to, like, survive through raids and stuff? Like, well, first of all, you're not going to encounter players as much as you would. Because right now, during the testing period of the game, we have these raid timers. So you spawn in, everybody spawns in, you know there's players in that raid. And you go and fight them, then you extract, and you go right back to your stash every single time. It's going to be a lot different. You're not going to encounter players as much. Like, you still will, but it's not going to be to the same level of consistency that we have right now. Because every time you spawn in, you know it's a brand new raid. You know, without a doubt, there's other players in there. It's going to be much more unpredictable once the system comes in. Because, 
essentially when a when players extract from one map and go to another it's going to be you know basically unknown how many players have actually gone to that place from the raid that you just started in or maybe another location and there's going to be areas like dead drops so you can like pay people or scabs or something to drop loot off if you go to a trader you can have the trader basically drop the loot off in your stash or your hideout and deliver it um and a lot of the facilities in the hideout itself are actually going to get overhauled where there's subcomponents of, say, the workbench and Intel Center. So, for example, with the Intel Center, there'll be a subcomponent that's an actual computer. And that computer is how you'll eventually get access to the flea market. So not only will it be level locked, but it'll be level locked, it'll be like locked through the hideout. And then ordering things from the flea market won't be instantaneous. Same thing with buying stuff from the, tra the traders. You'll actually have to like do like scavs on prime, basically, delivery. Scavs will like deliver the shit to your your base. Or if you want to get it quickly, you go to the trader yourself and then you buy the shit and then you take it back. So like technically it'll still take a little bit more time, but you can go do it yourself if you want to. And granted, a lot of the stuff that I just said may not all actually be exactly as I said it, but this is how a lot of it was kind of explained to me in bits and pieces throughout the years. And Nikita the other day um, on the dev cast said he didn't want to spoil a lot of like the personal storyline and like what that's going to look like to you guys, but like I just did. To, a, to an extent, again, like everything I just said may not be exactly as I said it, but it will be something along those lines. It'll be very, very similar. And I've known this for a long time. And, why, and you're like, why? how do you know this, Clean? It's like, well, I've done podcasts with Nikita since they started. All those dev casts and podcasts were my idea. I worked with BSG as their like marketing guy for the United States. And I also just have had a lot of conversations with Nikita and some guys at Battlestate about these kinds of things and just kind of like broadening my horizon in terms of what this game is eventually going to turn into. And so a lot of us like think that the game that we have right now is the game that is going to basically like the game will be like this at launch. It's not always going to be like this. It's going to change a lot. And how we progress and how we go through Escape from Tarkov will be very different. A lot of this won't happen, though, until like 1.0. Like, we will not get personal storylines, the prologue even, in Tarbank Tower until, like, the game is done and it's the 1.0 launch of Escape from Tarkov. Like, the day it, it is done, 1.0. It's finished. Uh, so that's still going to be a couple of years. But we will get a lot of this raid-to-raid -raid travel stuff before then. We will get changes to progression before then because we're going to have to test it out. And it's going to be a lot more intricate and it's going to be a lot more interesting. So hopefully this guy's, uh, you know, gives you guys a, a little bit better idea of like what EFT will actually be looking like on 1.0. Again, it's going to take a couple years and everything that I just said may not be exactly as I said it, but it will be something along those lines. And it's going to be much, much different than the current Escape from Tarkov that we have now, which is again, the mid game. We've already met all the traders. We've already been to all the raids. We've, we know everything. And then once you escape terminal and you've completed the game, you've reached the completion state for Escape from Tarkov, then you can then go back in raids and do side quests and mess around and do whatever the fuck you want within like the raids. But then there's supposed to be the open world mode, which is only achieved after you've completed the game and actually escaped. You've, you've escaped Tarkov, you got out. And open world mode is supposed to be that end game. That's where like, it's like, it kind of like the division, like the, uh, the Dark Zone, in a sense. There's like levels to the Dark Zone and like that's where you'll eventually spend most of your time. And there'll be different sets and forms of progression on open world that I think will also have a separate character. But you can obviously take your main character uh, from the main storyline, use him on arena, and also use him on open world if you want. But I don't think you'll be able to use all of the equipment and guns and stuff that you've acquired from it, I, I think. But again, uh, like there might be some like holes in what I'm saying. But again, it's supposed to be something along those lines. So, I don't know. Post what you guys think in the comments. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. And uh, hopefully you guys look forward to 1.0 Tarkov, because I am. I think it's going to be cool.